Our Hebrew lesson this morning is from Isaiah 43, uh, verses 1 through 7. But now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they will not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore I will give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather from the west. I will not I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even every one that is called by, the, by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him.
paying attention. We've had a lot going on here. Coming through the water and who am I? I am God's. And he will be with us through the water and the fire. And on and over and through the waters. Well, I just about want to give up and just let it go. But I want to first of all tell you about going over the waters. My sister went on a cruise a couple of years ago, and as luck would have it, she won the big bingo prize. She won a two-person cruise the next year. So last year she went on, well, she decided to go on the cruise. This is the boat she was on, boat. It's big. It's huge. The Oasis of the Sea is the largest passenger ship in the world. Inside it looks like apartment building downtown someplace. In fact, you can live here for the whole week and never know you're on the ocean. Well, you could go upstairs to the very top and enjoy that swimming pool, look down over the atrium. I didn't count how many floors, but it's a long ways down. Then you look up over there and there's the kids' swimming pool. What in the world is going on? You can sit on the deck if you really want to see the ocean, watch the, watch the waves go by. Or you can get on the merry-go-round, a real wooden merry-go-round carousel that turns. Or you could shop or eat. Or you could ride a zip line. This is my sister's friend riding the zip line. Or you could shop or eat. I mentioned shopping, <laughs> uh, casinos, and all the things that you would want to do, and shore leaves, and it is a city on the wave, the oasis of the sea. It's the way to ride. I guess if you're going to go on the ocean, let's go in a way that we don't even know we're on the ocean. Of course, that leaves us with a problem. We've got over the water, on the water, but we have not experienced the water. See, my sister and I have a difference of opinion. She likes, she likes tours that are all planned out, and she likes cruises where everything takes place. In fact, she's going on one the 1st of February. She's the one again, yet again, to a, uh, a Caribbean cruise. And that's okay. Love her for it. She's great. But I, my idea of a great vacation is figuring out how many rubles it'll take to get a shower in Moscow. Okay, I'm looking forward to that, but I want to travel by the seat of my pants and my year rail pass, you know? And ATM cards. Thank goodness for ATM cards. Anyway, we have a different opinion. I want to go through the struggle to face the reality of wherever I'm going. And if it comes to water, there's one fellow last June who went, you know, he went over the water. been through the water but it was certainly a scary trip across. Better, a lot scarier than a bridge or even a boat. Crossing Niagara Falls. Can you imagine that? He must have had a real tight rope moment as he put his foot on that wire for the first step off of the American side on the way to the Canadian side. And we kind of know how that feels. Maybe not about tightrope, but we know how it feels to make that first step into something very, very dangerous, something before us that we're not sure we can handle. Like maybe a college course, or a new relationship, or the end of a relationship, 
or teenagers. Well, any age for kids. Or retirement. Or the death of a beloved, a spouse. These are tightrope moments, and they are like going through the water of life, the, the raging, chaotic sea, or the raging myth, mist of Niagara Falls. And it's scary, and we have to remember several things. Isaiah and Nick have given us five tips to learn. Okay, tip number one. This is in your blood. You know, Nick Walinda did not get up there because he just happened to want to walk across Niagara Falls. It is in his blood. His family, his family has been on the tightrope since the 1700s. He's in the seventh generation of this family. They have faced this danger and they have had their share of tragedy. His great-grandfather Carl fell in 1978 in Puerto Rico and died from their profession, but they go on. It's in their blood, and Nick knew that as he stepped out onto that high wire across Niagara Falls. It is in his blood, and that is true for us when we face our tightrope moments. We've got to remember that we're not just by happenstance. You were put here on purpose. That's the problem I have with those who want to just talk about everything being just happened, you know, the, the world just happened, then that means I just happened and there's no purpose. It's, it's like, okay, you go through all your things, you die and it's over and who cares? And sooner or later the universe dies and who cares? But I see it as something that's much deeper than that and we are here because it is in our family heritage to be here. We are chosen by God to be Christians. Our part of the job was merely accepting that choice. It's in your blood. The second is remember to pray. When Nick first stepped on that rope, he started praying. And he had a microphone on and so that everyone could hear and on the, the uh, ABC broadcast, people could hear what he was saying and most of the time he was praying. He was thanking God for this opportunity. He was asking Christ to be with him. He was asking God to hold him up and keep him focused. And that's what we have to do. Remember to pray. No matter what it is, stay connected to God, for God is with you. If you're trying to cross the Niagara Falls, remember this is not just danger. It is one of the great powers and beauty that God has created. It is set before us to show the glory of God. The glory of God is just a representation of what God's power is all about. And Nick crosses over to test himself, to test reality. And along the way, he stops and he prays. Remember to pray. Keep your eye on your footing. Nick said that when he was walking across there, he would look down to see where he's putting his foot and he would see the water rushing beneath him. And that would make you dizzy. Not only is the the thing swaying in the wind, the wire swaying in the wind, but it's moving underneath it, and you know how that makes me feel anyway. And then he would look up and there was nothing but mist. You've got to keep your eye on your footing. And that's true for you and me in everything we do. Where is your anchor? Where is your strength? Are you balanced on Christ? Or are you just kind of going it alone? That's the question. Keep an eye on your footing. Because there'll be things that will try to knock you off. And that's the way it is. The fourth tip is to accept the safety line. Nick didn't want to. He said, I felt like a jackass putting that thing on. But it was ABC he was sponsoring. They had $1.3 million involved. They did not want to see him fall off and die on Television. So that little thing he's pulling behind him is his safety line. It is connected. He is connected. And he knows, well, if all else fails, there'll be that. We have a safety line. Remember, uh, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? You've got your, your uh, call a friend and 50-50 and, uh, and ask the audience. 
your safety nets? The same is true in life. We have a friend. Almost too obvious, isn't it? And we have one who will guide us through and carry us through because God is our safety line. No matter how bad it gets. Even if we miss that step, we missed watching our footing, we will be okay. And the fifth is remember. This is the important thing. You are blessed. Nick tells that when he got to that last few feet, remember how he leaned forward and ran for it? Because his family was waiting there. And his friends and, and the, his support staff. And he got there and he said, I felt so full of blessing because I had just done what I knew I needed to do. God put you here for a purpose. The hard thing is to figure out what that purpose is. It comes from way down deep. Joseph Campbell says, it's follow your bliss. Well, your bliss cannot be just something you think up. It has to be in the depth of yourself. It has to be down there where Christ is in you. That's why it's called desire. Desire means from the Father. When you have a true, deep, life-felt desire, and you follow that, you will discover your blessings. And yes, there will be obstacles, insurmountable obstacles in your life. There will be water to go through. There will be fire to go through. There will be struggles up one side and down the other. But even in the face of insurmountable objects, obstacles, remember you are blessed. And you can have the strength it takes to walk through the water. Because God will bring you through the water. As for Nick and the Willendas, well, he has the permits in line to walk across the Grand Canyon next. <laughs> and for you and me, we have today and the rest of our lives to cross, knowing that God is with us.